All right, we are live. Hello, 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 United States of America and beyond. I know beyond because I got a friend watching it in Mexico, so I know that there's people outside of the country. I guess they're still in the Americas, just not in the states of the Americas, but it's still America. I said something to someone the other day, Sydney, about America, and they're like, we're still in America, and I was like, where do you live? And they told me a country, and I was like, that's America. You're correct. I learned that in geography. I was really excited about that, but that is not what we're talking about today. Today, we're going to talk to you. We're going to try to deliver today what I believe one of the most uh, effective ways to get referrals and to harness your sales ability. Um, it is, it is, it has multiple reasons to do it, but the big reasons I'm going to say is because emergency contacts are important. Because I know every time I fill something out at like a gym or at the school, they ask who the emergency contact is. If I do like a four-wheeler ride, they're like, who's your emergency contact? Because they want to know if something happens to you, how they're going to get in touch with you, right? And so emergency contacts is a huge deal. And I truly believe, I truly believe that you can write an extra on top of what you're doing. I'm not saying to change what you're doing. I'm not saying to stop selling however you're selling, but I believe you can sell an extra two to five applications every single week by using the information that you're going to get here. What does that mean? That means an extra 50 grand or more every single year. I know, I know, I know. This is one of the only businesses I know of you can talk about a $50,000 increase by just making a little change, but it is a huge change. And so we're going to get into it. And uh, I just want to kind of tell you a little bit why I believe these are valuable. And then maybe if you guys want to each share a little bit, I do have uh, just so you guys know, uh, listen to the call. I have got some absolute warriors that have have taken this and used it and taught other people and they can speak from experience, like have made, you know, many, many, many sales using this system. Um, so I want you guys to hear from them. But but to me, I want to tell you for Paul Minichino, why is this valuable? And so I'll tell you this is that I just recently, recently, I had a client of mine that I wrote in 2012. Now, if you're watching this, it's 2022, okay? But last year, she passed away. So two, so, so what is that? That's nine years later, she had passed away. And I got a call from her, from her niece to say, hey, my Aunt Margaret passed away. I want to know if you could help us with, with the, the paperwork for her, for her insurance, right? And you say, well, how did she have your number? Because I, I made sure she had it. I, I used this system. I gave her my information. She was able to call. I was able to help them with the claims. And it was just an easier process for the family, right? So this is why it's important to the clients because there's over $2 billion of unclaimed insurance. And we want to make sure that doesn't happen to our clients. So we're going to go over exactly how to get this. But I want you to know the value to the clients. Here's another value. I had a client, 2014, Sydney, 2014. Bank account closed, right? <clears throat> bank account closed. I get the notification, bank account closed. Well, what else do I get? I also get the notification that the return mail came back and then I sent them a letter and it returned again. And the phone numbers that I called them on didn't work either. And I'm like, it's been since 2014, you've had this insurance. This was just at the end of last year. And I was able to, because of the emergency contact, get in, get in touch with their family, because I called the brothers, the sisters, the kids, the mom, the dad, I called through them and get their information and get their payment back and forth because they're older now. Their insurance is more expensive. They've had medical conditions. We were able to update the address. So like I say, emergency contacts, and we're going to talk about the referrals and we're going to talk about, you know, W-W, uh, no, W-I-F-M, right? W-I-F-M. That's what we all listen to. What's in it for me radio. Um, that's what we're going to talk about because it's important about what it's, what's in it for you, but just what it does for the clients is absolutely outrageous. So I want to start with that. And what do you guys, uh, Sydney, Paul, do you guys have anything that you want to add as far as like value to the clients and, and why you think it's valuable to them? Um, yeah, I mean, to, to kind of piggyback what you said, um, you know, I, I recently had a, a death claim. It was a 80 year old lady. She was healthy as a horse, like nothing wrong with her whatsoever. Died, died in her sleep. Right. And, uh, her daughter called me, her daughter called me to tell me because I, she was on the emergency contact list. Her daughter called me to let me know that she had died. She didn't call the insurance company. She called me. 
which 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 is what I'm trying to portray to these people um, when I'm calling them on the phone. Like, you need to call me, and then we can get the paperwork started. And that's kind of like the service part of it too. Like, we don't we don't necessarily have to deal with the death claims. Like, it's it's part of our service that we bring to the clients. Um, so uh, yeah, I'll say this too, man. Uh, death claims, mispayments. Uh, yep. they requested mm -hmm. anything from the insurance company. Um, you know, they've requested this. Anytime I get a notification from the insurance company, it is a reason to call and talk to the client. And it's usually a reason to have another conversation because that's all the lead does is just start a conversation. So like these, all this, all the service work should be making money work, not just service work. I just want to put that in there because some people are like, well, why would I do that if the insurance company do it? Cause it gives you an opportunity to talk to your clients and help them some more or else you can just you know that's what we do so um sydney do you have anything you wanted to add to that as far as the importance or you feel good about all that stuff i mean you guys are saying it perfectly it's service it's a service and the value that we bring to the client um i had i came across a client who was not originally my client but he did have a policy with he and his wife at the time had a policy with columbian financial group who we also work with and, um, you know, I kind of just checked in on them and I was like, well, you know, if you have these policies, is everything, you know, going okay? Like, you know, maybe I was basically trying to book an appointment to do a review to look at what they had. And he's like, well, you know, I do have a question. Um, my wife passed away like six years ago, but, um, so I was like, oh, I'm so sorry to hear that. You know, did, did the policy pay out? And he was like, no. And I said, why is that? And he said, well, he said, well, I'm still paying for it. And I was like, wait, you're still like every single month, you're still paying for the policy. And he's like, yeah. And I was like, he's like, I just didn't know who to call or like how insurance works. I never had this happen to me before. So I had no idea how to get the money from the insurance company. So I'm like, oh my gosh. So I do a three-way call with him and um, him and uh, CFG. And I explained the situation to them and they're like, yeah, absolutely. You know, assuming that this claim gets approved then he's going to get all the money he's paid back for six years since she passed away, plus the 50,000 for the policy. And he was, you know, I, I couldn't see him because this was over the phone, but he, I could tell he was tearing up because he's like, you have no idea what a blessing this is. I've literally been struggling for six years with like, something crazy like six or seven young kids and he can't work because he got disabled because he had some things going on for himself so I was literally like how have you been like surviving he's like honestly I couldn't even tell you that's crazy that blows my mind and that was like and that and if if the agent originally would have set up the emergency contact they would have reached out to you right away and that would have been solved sooner so like that just proves the point is like, we owe it to clients. We owe it to people. Okay. Humans, right? Humans. We owe it to them to review their insurance, to set up an emergency contact because nobody does this stuff, right? Like we all talk about it. Like we all do it, but yeah, nobody does it, right? Nobody does it. So it's huge that we, we get back with those people. And so if we could, um, if we could, and I don't know if you guys want to rock, paper, scissor for it, or who wants to go first on this, you just pop a hand up. But if someone, if one of you two could go over, how do we get the emergency contacts in the phone? Where at, like where at in the sales process is it? How do we get them? And then we'll break from how do we get them? We'll go into calling them and selling them as well. So people know how to do the whole thing right from here. So um, who wants to cover how they get the emergency contacts in the home? I can go. Ladies right. first. Okay. Ladies first. Sweet. All right, cool. So first things first is on our website, we have an official form for the emergency contacts. So it's mandatory that you have those printed out with you. And if you forget to, if you have them with you and you forget to do it, staple it to the back of your application. Okay. It's part of the process. We have to get this every single time. It's under the agent resources or ask your manager and we can get it sent out to you. But here's how you do it. Here's where it goes. So we just finished helping out. Uh, we wrote a policy. We got everything. Signatures are done. So this happens right towards the end of, you know, before you leave the house. Okay. So I'm just going to go right into it exactly what I say to the client, right? So I have my form out, I have my pen and paper out and I'm like, all right, Mary, now the last thing we have to do is something called your emergency contact list. 
I don't know if you know this, but there's like billions of dollars of unclaimed insurance money floating around out there. And it's not because the companies don't want to pay out. It's just because they have no way of knowing that something happened to you unless someone calls and tells them, right? And they're like, right. I'm like, awesome. So what we do is we put a list of 10 local friends and family together. Um, I'm going to give them a call, give them all my information. So this way, God forbid, when the day comes that something happens to you, they can give me a call and I can make sure that this money gets paid out to your family as quickly as possible. Does that make sense? Yes. Okay, great. Who would be first on that list? And Time you out. keep your head down. <laughs> Time out. I love that. We need to pick right back up there. But I want to I wanna point out a couple of things that you said couple of key words one more thing we have to do it's not one more th a service we it's not a service we provide it is a service but it's one more thing we have to do verbiage is important and i liked how you said it so when so when when they use this and when you die they know who, it's not if or someday they could it's like you're reinforcing the why again in their head so like when you die you're repainting it for them so you're not only setting up the emergency contact you're solidifying the sale you're rebuilding the why and you're you're cooling down, honestly. We just got all their information. And like you're literally, this is part of the cool down, right? The cool down process of your sale. You can't just get their bank and be like, peace out. Like, you know, like it doesn't work like that. So, all right. So I just want to point out those key things. And then you were saying, you were saying, keep your head down. Okay. What do you mean by that? So uh, this is, you know, assuming you're with, you're sitting with the client, of course, because, but all this, like all these mannerisms matter, they all mean something, right? So keep your head down. Why? Because if you're busy, they have to get busy. So a lot of times at this point, they scramble a little bit and they're like, uh, uh, okay, let me get my phone. <laughs> so I want them to get their phone. That's the whole game, right? Now the person who, this is now, we've entered the game. And if whoever's the first person to pick their head up, I promise you every single time is going to lose. So it's not going to be me. I'm going to keep my head down until I have at least 10 referrals. Because if you get to three and lift your head up, they'll be like, that's it. And now you put yourself in a vulnerable position because you're up and you're like, you're done. You're done. That's how Paul did right there. You're out of the game. You lost. So, um, when mo a lot of agents, when they tell me that they're getting like three or four referrals, typically I've noticed that those are the easiest ones for the client to um, think of. And those are the easiest ones to get, but it's going to take a little bit of coaching on your end with your head down to remind them of the people um, that they could possibly think of. So like, I like to remind them of, you know, think about who's let's, who's some of the people that would know if something happened to you today, like these people are going to notice immediately if something's wrong, your neighbors, your coworkers, people you go to church with, um, you know, your granddaughter. So this is when you do really good rapport, this is the perfect time to bring that full circle because a lot of times they'll, um, you guys, what are you guys laughing at? <laughs> A lot of times they'll forget about some people that they mentioned to you. Like I remember one time I went inside and I'll keep this short because I know we're just going through the script, but um, I went inside a house and this woman had literally like over a hundred little pictures on her wall. They were like covering her wall. And I was like, wow, you have a big family. But on the table right behind where we were sitting was a small table of like 50 pictures of the same girl. I was like, is that your favorite granddaughter? She was like, yeah. So she tells me throughout the whole appointment how much she loves her granddaughter, why she's her favorite and all this stuff. And we're at like number eight on the emergency contacts. And she's like, I can't think of anyone else. I'm like, well, what about your granddaughter? She wasn't even on the list. So just goes to show you, just like feel free to remind them, like, you know, it's hard to think of everything on the spot, right? So just coach them through it you know, your niece, your nephew, your sister, brother, like somebody's gonna know. Another really good trick you can use is um, have them pull up their phone and go to their contact list and go to their most recent call log. And most likely the last 10 people that they talk to are the people who are going to notice if something happened to them. Like that's the people uh, that they talk to pretty often. I would say this too, Sydney, um, and this might be hard, but uh, if you're, if you're consistently not getting 10, it's your fault. 
I'm doing it. something wrong. Don't yeah. say the client, like, I get it. Sometimes you don't, right? That should be the exception, not the rule. If you get 10, you get 10. And if you're not getting 10, it's your fault, right? So the best thing I love about this business is if you're not winning at the level you want to live, win at, it's your fault. Uh, stop, stop complaining and figure it out. Like, and when I say that, I mean, ask somebody like, hey, I'm obviously doing something wrong. Help me and actually want help or just, you know, you know, what do we want to help? We want to help you. Um, well, that's that's the key is recognizing and acknowledging that it's something that you're doing because it's the easiest thing in the world to blame it on everything else or make excuses or oh well they just moved from out of the country oh well they really don't know anyone oh she said she stays home all day and has no friends I've heard it all people get your dang ten <laughs> yeah yeah people around here they're they're not from here I'm like you know I've sold there they, they I have agents that sell there yeah. don't lie to yourself um all right is there so you get the names is there anything else you do to wrap that up or how do you how do you tie that up yeah so to finish solidifying after you've gotten your 10 or as much as possible or more i've gotten the most i've gotten before ever paul is 40. i've gotten wow. 40 wow. yeah from one person and that was from a lady who swore to me that she didn't even know 10 people right before we started okay wow. that's incredible so after i get all the names i turn the paper around and face it to them. And I'm like, all right, awesome. Now, like I said, I remind them again because I'm not shy about the fact that I'm gonna call these people, okay? So I remind them, I flip it around and I say, okay, so like I said, um, I'm gonna give everybody on here a call and make sure they save my information in their phone so that when something happens to you, they know who to reach out to and they know what to do, okay? Awesome. Now, out of all the people that you put down on this list here, Mary, um, how many of them do you think could benefit from the information that I gave you today? Probably all of them, right? And then 50, 50 chance of what's going to happen. Either they're just going to say, yeah, oh no. Yeah. They're just going to say, oh yeah, all of them, you know, no problem. Talk to them. Or they're going to pick and choose more likely than not. I feel like they'll pick and choose and they'll say, oh yeah, I definitely need to talk to Susie. Oh, don't call uncle Harry. Like, <laughs> yeah. Like they'll pick and choose for you. And um, then I'll be like, okay, no problem. Well, and I'll put a check mark next to their name and I'll play the game a little bit, right? And I'm like, all right, well, it couldn't hurt to ask all of them, could it? And they're like, no, couldn't hurt to ask. And now you've gotten your permission to speak to everybody who's on the list. I love that. I love that. I love when they say, uh, don't talk to this person. They're mean. I'd be like, I love mean people. I'm going to try and talk to them. Like I'll challenge it. Cause like at that point, they're my client. We're having fun. You know, right. I love when they're like, they need insurance, but they probably won't get it. I'll be like, do I have your permission to like try with them? Like, you know, can I push them a little bit? I love when they say that, like, you know, like if it's like, uh, I don't know, I've had that happen. I'm like, Oh, challenge accepted. It's on. It is on like Donko. So that's how you get the emergency contacts. That's how you service your clients. That's how you have more numbers to call. That's how you get them. Okay. So now we got them. All right. I've met tons of people that have gotten them. I used to be a person when I started, I got a bunch for a while. I was nervous and scared to call them. So I didn't, I didn't, I didn't call them, you know? And so once I started calling them, I got so excited because I wrote $7,000 in business my first week calling emergency contacts. And I had figured it out. You know what I mean? I told Jane I was changing my entire sales plan. And she was like, don't do that. And I was like, all right, you're right. I'll make smarter decisions. And so, um, but but I've, I'm telling you from personal experience, I mean, hundreds of thousands of dollars of insurance has been sold to using this strategy. So if you would, Paul, uh, Paul, would you talk about, will you talk about, uh, maybe what's tricked you into calling them? Cause I feel like you had a, you were kind of the same as me for a little bit. So what tricked you, how'd you trick your way into calling them? And then what's your strategy? How do you do it? Oh yeah. And I will say I was part of the camp that, you know, got the emergency contacts, but ne didn't necessarily call them at first. Right. That, you know, so everybody, everybody makes, everybody makes mistakes on that, but um, good news is I'm doing it now. Uh, so don't be like me, but, uh, but yeah, so, in order to trick myself, I put it in my calendar instead of dial, because, you know, typically I will dial leads. Um, what during dial time, I put dial emergency contacts. So it's very specific so that I have to do it. 
right? Because, you know, I was, I used to be, be just so like leads, 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 leads. These people requested this information, leads, 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 leads. But there is so much money in the emergency contacts. So many people don't have insurance. It's freaking crazy. And that's when I came to the realization that I need to like force this into my calendar because I wrote like, you know, six grand one week off, off emergency contacts. And I was like, wow. Like I didn't spend any money on that. Like that is all. And what's crazy is you'll make like a $30 a month sale, right? But that leads to a $200 a month sale, right? So now your ROI is, I don't even know the numbers on that, but it's a lot, okay? Um, so yeah, so every Monday I trick myself into calling the emergency contacts from the weekend for two hours, um, eight to 10. I'm calling them every week. Um, I had a strategy, Paul, and that's like, I love that. Cause that's what worked into your calendar. I printed mine out and put them with my leads, you know, because I used to use a binder wow. of leads and I'll print them out and put them in the binder. Still got a binder right here with some leads. Um, so I just, you know, like find a system, right. That works for you. Right. I think that's the thing is if you go to sit down and call leads and you don't have your emergency contacts there, you're not going to call them. If you right. sit down to call emergency contacts, you're going to call emergency contacts. Cause that's what you're sitting down to call. Um, so can you talk about, um, cause I know we've made some transitions on that and some things that have been working. Can you talk about how you're, what you're, what you're saying and anything that you're doing? And then Sydney, if you want to think about, cause you're just going to be a little different, kind of the same thing for you, um, after Paul. And this, and we are, this is like calling the actual emergency contacts, right? Yeah. So let's talk about what you're doing okay. on Monday and how you're doing the sales okay. and all that stuff. Uh, yeah, so I came to the realization that I didn't necessarily need to meet physically with referrals. So, um, so you know, I get I get the the client's permission to call these people, and then I'm calling them, and I'm saying, you know, hey Bob, yep, hey Bob, well, why don't you just call is- me? Like, why don't you just call me? Like, I'm a like I'm one of the emergency contacts from Justin and Sydney. Like, you help Justin and Sydney, and I'm an emergency contact. Let's okay. hear like, what is it? Actually yeah, doing? let's do that. Yeah, live script, baby. Okay. Yeah. Do you um, want my name to be Paul or do you want it to be something different? I would like it to be something different. Bob? Bob. You, you, yeah, you could be Bob. Bob. All right. Ring, ring. Hello. Hey, Bob. Yeah. Hey, Bob, this is Paul. Uh, you don't know me, but you do know Justin and Sydney Bailiff, right? Oh, yeah, I know That's that. That's your friend? Okay. Did they tell you I was going to be giving you a call at all? Not at all. They didn't tell you, oh my gosh, they were, they were supposed to text you. Um, anyway, the reason for the call is uh, I was actually able to help them out with like a mortgage protection policy the other day, and they just wanted to put you down on their emergency contact list, and I wanted to make sure that was okay with you. Yeah, that's fine with me. Okay, perfect, Bob. Your job is really simple. Um, it's really just to hold on to my contact information, and when they die, let me know so that we can get the insurance out to the family as quickly as possible. Because there's over $7.4 billion of unclaimed life insurance out there, not because the insurance companies can't pay, but just because no one ever makes a claim on it. Policies get lost, people move, um, et cetera, et cetera. So this is just something that we do for our clients to make sure the death claims get paid out. Now, is this your cell phone that we're talking on? Uh, yeah, this is my cell phone. Perfect. Uh, I'm going to shoot you over my contact card so that you have all my information, like my office address. Uh, my cell phone is the best number to reach me at. Um, but that's pretty much it. Unless you got any other questions. No, no, that's really it. Perfect. Okay. Now, who do you have your life insurance with Bob? Uh, I actually don't have any. You don't have any. Oh my gosh. It's probably something we need to talk about. What's your schedule looking like later today or tomorrow? Uh, we could hop back on the phone and go over some, go over some stuff. Um, I can do later today around like three or four. Uh, I could do, I could do four if that works for you. Yeah, I could do four. All right. Perfect. So what I'll do, Bob, is I'll put in for about four, uh, today. It only takes me about 10 minutes to run through everything. Um, I'll plan on talking with you then. Cool. Awesome. And you would say it goes like that a lot of the times. What if I said, okay, so let's back up and you say, so who do you have your life insurance with? Oh, I got one through work. I say, I say, perfect. Um, Perfect. Work insurance is great. Uh, it's either cheap or free, right? You should max that out. 
The other thing about work insurance is it's like renting a car, right? When you're done with the car, you give back the keys. So when you're not work, when you get fired or leave the job, right? You don't get to keep that, keep that insurance anymore. Uh, so this is something outside of work that you own and control. Did you ask a question there? I like yeah, that yeah. car so, analogy. So, so I say, so I say, is that is that something that you want to talk about? So yeah, so basically, you you make a rebuttal and then you say something right. like, "Is that something you'd be open to talking about?" Or is that right. so? If they say they don't have insurance. It's like, oh my gosh. Well, I guess we need to talk then. It's not like a there's a no question as to whether we're talking or not, right? Right. Like right. that is the thing that all blew my mind when we started doing them over the phone. When they said they didn't have insurance, I was like, well, oh, well, I guess we need to talk then. Um, you know, right. do you do you have a little time now, <laughs> or is like later today or tomorrow better? You know, and they'll tell you if they really don't want to talk. They'll be like, no, like, oh, I don't yeah. give a crap. Okay, well, do you think it would make sense? No, no, no. Okay, well, just say my name and number for them. That's really it. You know, makes so the way to back out is if they start pushing on you hard, you go, yeah, just it's all good. You know, yeah. Anyway, no big, no big deal. You know, most important thing, just say my number for them, so that God forbid they die, you can let me know. And then if something yeah. changes, let me know. You know, so it's really easy to back out of it if it starts to get. Yeah. And I think, yeah, I think, uh, you know, it's different than calling a lead, like a lead. I am pushing to the end of time. You are not getting off the phone, right? Like a, a referral is a, a free shot on goal. Like, congratulations. You got a free shot. Like it don't cost you any money. Okay. You've already paid it. Right. So it's just kind of like, we're just, we're just seeing if something will stick. Right. Um, right. kind of sort of thing, but you're assuming, you're assuming the sale. And a lot of times, like, you don't even have to ask them. They'll say, like, what does that look like for me? Oh, yeah. I love when they say that. Yeah, what would it be if I could get some insurance? <laughs> like, oh, my gosh, where you been all my life? So we covered the I don't have any insurance. We yeah. covered the work insurance. And what if they said something like, yeah, I actually I got a met life policy or if I got or I got a mutual, mutual of Omaha policy or something like that. Uh, so. If they say I have a different policy, I'll ask them a couple of different questions. Like, okay, well, did you, did you get that off the TV commercial? Like, did you, like, how, like, how did you end up getting that policy? Did you go to an office? Did an agent come with, come see you? Um, Cause that kind of depends on what, where I'm going to go with that. Um, like if they got something off the TV, I know 1000% I can beat the price like 1000%. So, if they, so when they say they have a different policy, I say, Perfect. I work with like 30 different companies and uh, nine times out of 10, I can typically beat the rate, you know, if not keep what you got, but is that something that you'd be open to talking about? So you give them a reason to meet with you and then you transition with, is that something you'd be open to talking about? I love when right. they say they had an old policy of any of the companies we've ever worked with. I'd be like, Oh my gosh, that's one of our companies. Yeah. Um, odds are I can probably save you some money. When's the last time you reviewed that? Well, it's been right. never. Okay, well, look, we should definitely review that. Um, honestly, I had one guy, Bob, and I'll tell a story, some kind of story. Like I had a guy, Bob, we called the company and he had 25,000, like 40 bucks a month. You know, like I couldn't beat the price. It was a great deal. So we asked him, you know, do the premiums ever change? No, coverage change? No, it was a good deal. And then we asked him like, hey, what if, what if, what if he stops making the payments? How's that work? They're like, well, if he stops making the payments, it's worth $25,169. Like so he can keep paying that's worth 25 or stop paying that's worth 25,169. They're like, yep. And I just don't know if your policy has that, but it would be worth checking. You know what I mean? So like you can have different stories. You can say, yeah, I actually just helped this one. Like all these stories that would you use to give them a reason to meet with you based on what type of policy you think it might be and all the different situations. Right. Right. Yeah. Stories, facts, tell, stories, sell. Like, and the crazy part is like that story is 100% true. Yeah, like, 100% true. Like, 100, yeah. So, yeah. Um, but yeah. It's, uh, and here's the thing about stories is like use somebody else's stories until you have your own. But your own are always going to be the most powerful because you can't shake me on my experiences. Like you can shake me on whether that really happened for somebody else, but you can't shake me. Like I was there. You can't tell me I was like, I've done this over and over again with people. Um, you yeah. know, sometimes we can get you more coverage for the same amount of money. There's all sorts of reasons that we should meet, you know, um, 
What about, uh, so I think those are really the only uh, only things they can say to you, Paul, when they say like, so who do you have your insurance with? It's either a company name, work insurance, or I got none. Right. Yeah. And, you know, sometimes they're super, same thing as leads. Like sometimes they're super, super nice. Sometimes they don't want to talk to you. Right. Yeah. So it just, you know, it, it is what it is. Right. It is what it is. Um, what would you say your contact ratio is with emergency contacts? Um, probably about 60%. 60%? Like, yeah. So compared to a lead, that's high, right? Yeah. On a phone call. Um, do you do any text messaging or anything? Uh, so, yeah. So I actually have, I send the client a text message to send to their people okay. and typically this works the best if you like sit there and do it with them so that you know they got it because a lot of time you know um it, it was happening to me that they're like well i didn't they didn't talk to me about this and like, i don't i don't, really don't want to give you the information like uh, i'm going to talk with them first so like if they know you're going to call oh, it's so much smoother oh, so yeah. So, so I typically do that. I send them a text message saying, Hey, like every, no need to worry. Everything's fine. My insurance agent, Paul, is going to give you a call. Please take his call. Um, and here's his number. And so they're expecting my call. Uh, now let's just say I call the person three times in a row. They don't answer. Then I'll send them a text message and say, Hey, this is Paul. Or I, I mean, I could tell you the text messages. Um, but it's like, Hey, this is, this is Paul. Uh, um, Bob's insurance agent. Um, can you chat quick? So it, like that's that's the gist of it. It's a, it's a little bit more. I don't have it memorized, but I think uh, it's you know, uh, I just... hey, hey, this is Paul Bob Smith's insurance agent. Everything's good. Thumbs up. They put you down as an emergency contact. Smiley face. Can you chat really quick? Something like that. Uh, yeah, yeah, something like that. Some yeah. emojis. It's 2022. People emoji it up. Yeah, people um, love emojis so yeah, then i send them that and we're yeah. sorry and typically they'll they'll say like yes or like not till four or whatever right it is i'm telling you what i would i would say the contact ratio with the text messages and everything i think it's higher than 60 percent, to be honest with you and here's what i've known as i've looked at the statistics on these if you call and work this system for every 10 emergency contacts you get two sales await you so if you're getting you know, 30 or more a week, you're looking at six sales a week, which six sales a week should lead to, you know, 40, 50, 60 of these things a week, which means very soon you could be, and now you're part of the family, you know, like you're working through this list of people. Now everybody knows you. Right. And so I would say that, uh, for me and for Paul, the, the COVID transition was what moved more toward this over the phone. Like, Hey, let's just check in and see if they're interested. Right. Like, but maybe you're not, maybe you're not there yet. Right. And I think that some people are, and some people aren't. And I got a lot of people that do the same thing and book it in the home too. So, cause I used to run around, I used to go to every single house and be like, I got to, I'm coming over. You know, they knew I was there to talk about insurance and stuff, but, but just also know that you can do it over the phone. And then Sydney, if you would, can you talk about how you would do it to book it in person, how you would do that, that transition? Yeah. So do you want me to go through how I, so you want me to do like how I book it, right? Yeah, yeah, because it's very similar except for yeah. the, the transition at the end. I believe everything's pretty darn close except for the transition is to an in-person instead of an over the phone. Okay, so should I just do the transition part or should I do the whole thing? Let's hear the whole thing. We got It's the, pretty, the, it is similar, the, but there honestly is some stuff that's different. Like, and this is the thing about scripts, right? Is some stuff that works for, Paul Vanthoff might not work for me and vice versa. So, you know, it's kind of just hearing both and seeing which one fits your personality the best and is the smoothest for you. Like it's going to take some time of practice to, you know, figure out what's smooth, but we're essentially saying the same thing. So mine the goes principles, like the principles are, the principles are exactly the same. Exactly. And I want you guys to hear that phone script, a phone script B, if they're booking appointments, the principles are the same. So yeah. the differences you're going to hear are very small. I, I know, like, I know to you, Sydney, you're like, that's way different. No, it's pretty damn close. Yeah, it's close. <laughs> it's close. Yeah, it's pretty close. I know. But uh, yes, let's hear it. I want to hear it. I'm ready. You can call me. Okay. Do you want me to be Paul or Bob or someone different? You could be Paul. 
Yeah, it's weird when you're a Paul to be a call Paul though. So that's why. Yeah, I'm it is. Right, right, right. I get it. Okay, I'll be Paul. All right. All I'll right. Be. So Paul, and then let's call. We're uh, we'll do like Dustin and Courtney. Like I helped out Dustin and Courtney. That's the next couple I thought of. So perfect. All right. So my script would be like, um, Hey Paul, how are you? I'm good. Good, good. This is Sydney. I'm actually friends with your cousin Dustin. You know Dustin, right? Oh yeah, Dustin. I love him. Yeah, yeah. Awesome. Well, very cool. Um, I was actually with Dustin and Courtney this past weekend and we put together like a little life insurance for their family. Um, so that God forbid something happens to either of them, they can leave some money behind for the kids. Um, so the reason for the call is we actually put something together called their emergency contact list. And all that simply means, Paul, is we would like you to save my name and my phone number in your cell phone so that God forbid the day comes and something happens to Dustin or Courtney. Um, you can call me and let me know so I can make sure the money pays out for their kids as quickly as possible. Would you be okay with that? Yeah, that'd be awesome. Sweet. Okay, if you could just let me know when you have a pen to take down some of my information. Got it. Cool. All right, so my name is Sydney, S-Y-D-N-E-Y. -Y. I spell my first and last name and I say, but you can save it as Sydney Insurance just in case you forget a part of my name. If you just type in insurance, it'll come right up. My phone number is blah, blah, blah. I give them my phone number. Um, and Paul, I actually work with like 14 different insurance companies. This way I'm able to shop through, find the best um, benefits and the best price to fit, you know, their needs and their family situation. And the best product for them was actually with Mutual of Omaha. So if you want to go ahead and write down Mutual of Omaha and help them spell it. Um, okay, perfect. So you should have my name, my phone number and the insurance company. You have all that? Yep. Sweet. Okay, so just as soon as we get off the phone, make sure you save that in your um, in your contacts because if you lose that piece of paper, then you know how that goes. So um, the last thing before I left there, Paul, was I had actually asked Dustin who on this you know on these emergency contacts that he cared about that he thought might benefit from the information I gave him on how like how I help families out, and since you're his cousin, of course he thought of you. Um, so I just wasn't sure. Do you live like in the same city that they do? Or are you like nearby in the same area? So if I know it's Miami, then I'll say, are you here out here in Miami as well? Or do you live somewhere else? I'm out here. Okay, I'm say, yeah, I live in Miami. I'm like, um, okay, awesome. What's your address out here in Miami? And then I literally just book the appointment. Sweet. I love that. I love it. Awesome. I don't know if, if everyone's catching it. I got crazy feedback for some reason, but um, I don't know if everyone was catching it, but like you are like, telling the client like you're telling the emergency contact how you were able to help Dustin and Courtney and by doing that you're selling them on the benefits you have to offer and the insurance yeah. companies you have to offer how you really care about people and they care about their family and like so so you're you're planting seeds the whole time and I love that um and really it's like which one's better I don't know I don't know which one's better, which one, which one, whichever one's better is the one that you want to do, right? Do you want to go run them? Exactly. Like whatever one you want to put the effort in on is the one that's going to work. But I promise you this, you can make a six figure income using the emergency contacts and you can really serve your clients and really make sure that like when something does happen, their family's taken care of and you become a full service agent to where you're not just helping them. You're helping their kids, their parents, their cousins, their aunts, their friends, and you're now someone that they all know. You know, when I go to certain barbecues, everybody knows me as the insurance guy. I'm the awesome insurance guy. I'm not the one people don't like. I'm the one everybody loves. You know why? Because when one of their family members die, I come in with the check, right? And they've seen it happen. So it's like you become one of these like spheres of influence where you're this important person. Like I've met people. I don't know if you guys have met these people that talk about how the insurance guy used to come around and collect money every month and hang out and have dinner with the family and talk to all the neighbors and that you just used to be a part of the community, right? And we don't necessarily go around and collect the payments every month, but it's cool when you go around and you see a cousin of one of your clients and everybody knows that you're their person, you know, like there's a, there's a level of respect there. It's kind of cool. Like, I'm like, I'm younger than y'all, but like you ask me these interesting questions, you know, it's kind of cool. <laughs> Um, so with that being said, I don't know that there's much more to add in the emergency contacts. I feel like that's, that's the system. I mean, that's how it works. Uh, we didn't create it. We've just executed it, you know, and we've, we've refined it and we're trying to make it better all the time. Um, and with that, I do appreciate Sydney. I appreciate your time for livening up the call.
brighten it up in here. And Paul, I know you're a busy man. You got things you could be doing for taking the time out. I really appreciate it. Appreciate you guys leading from the front. And uh, you guys enjoy the rest of your day. And catch, uh, catch us on the next episode of All About Sales. Woo! <laughs> Bye, guys. Bye. Yeah.